Listener warning. Everything about this podcast is offensive and often stupid. Live from the north side of Racine, Wisconsin. Oh, it's that podcast again. (laughs) It's Guys, Games, and Beer! Yeah, feel that energy in the room? It's because we're. There is energy in the room. We were kind of tired. We were exhausted in the last one. I was actually hungover. And the lights are on. All day. All day? You were hungover all day? Yeah, that. I can probably attest to that because you look pretty rough in the morning. <laughs> he was down for me a matter of three hours total. Yep. So before we get started with topics, let's talk about the most important topic, which is today's show beer. Tom. Our show beer tonight is some from one of our favorite breweries. This is from the MKE Brewery, Milwaukee Brewery, out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this is actually one of their better. Uh, this is seasonal, right, Travis? This is seasonal. Their summer seasonal. This is their summer seasonal. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Totally. That helps a lot too. This is. Their weekend at Louis. It is a um a blueberry flavored ale, amber ale. ale thank you. Well, ale. A- okay, amber ale, ale. Okay. All right, we're being we're being really really specific. We drink beer. So we're being very. We're reviewing it. We should talk about the details of said beer. Okay. The the detail the details of said beer is it's a. Uh, it's got a hint of blueberry in it. It's not a sweet beer. It's a good amber ale, a great summer drink. It's not like that damn summer shandy stuff that's like drinking sugary lemonade. What? Did I just, did I go there? Did I go there? Okay. All right. All right, guys, let's give it a try and see what we think. I've already had it. I know it's super Yeah, delicious. it's so good. Okay. We've all had it, but we're going to, this is for the that's show. This is the first time I've had it. See, I, and again, I like it because it doesn't. It's not a sweet blueberry. You can taste the blueberry, but it's not like a sweet beer. Yeah. It's, it's like a blueberry well. cobbler. This is this is like a summer beer right here. But, well, it is a, it is a summer that's seasonal. The, that's the point, Mike. <laughs> 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 summer seasonal. Literally, beer. the definition. I went summer seasonal. <laughs> I, I I do. I think I it's a good good so. beer, but it's if you're not a fan of blueberries, it's got blueberry flavor and it, it doesn't stop. So yeah. uh, you're. No, I you ought to like blueberries if you jump in. Well, I was gonna say I, don't <laughs> I agree with that. I don't even like blueberries, and I actually like this one. All right, good, good. Okay, so everyone, I'm happy it's, it's one back. of my favorite beers. All right, Yay. super good. Okay, so pretty much unanimous Larry except for Larry, who is going to be the dissenter on this whole thing. Just to be a bastard, Larry. Um, Just to be a lot. Why do we still? Why do we still like Larry? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the guy who loves Larry. Come on. Oh. 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 That said, yes, Larry is a Zima fan. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, what's his name over at uh, the Toad? And you know what, you we were talking about Zima. We said, well, you yeah, stock Zima, and he gave us a look of death. He really did. Yeah. It was well, just a light Corey, yeah. That's what it was. It's not well, a gin and tonic. It's too sweet to be a gin and tonic. Yeah, they made a light gin and tonic. <laughs> <sighs> right, Travis? That's yeah, pretty much what it was. Yeah. <laughs> It is not. No, anyway, gin and tonic is good for you. Debatable. All right, so Rob, mm. what is our first topic tonight? The first topic is crap we picked up at Midwest Gaming Classic. We were originally going to shoot this at the Midwest Gaming Classic, but quite honestly, we were so amazingly hungover. Uh, uh, the gang was really worn out. We did not have time to shoot, like, one more episode even. Like we did last year, we shot, like, three episodes there. This year, we just squeaked out we one, barely. Barely. Yeah, we were working the whole weekend, so. Yeah, we were working. This was it was tough, weekend. right? Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, it was a tough it was weekend. Again, wasn't it? And they, we added that extra day in, too, so. Yeah, that Friday oh, night, man. So it's wine about MGC day. <laughs> no, was MGC fun. was wonderful. It was so, it was so much fun, but it's a weekend you can only have every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's absolutely true. Because we're old. Share crap with other people. <laughs> We're not getting <laughs> any younger. Sometimes you gotta take it. <laughs> we should probably change our slogan next week to that. We're not getting, We're any, not getting any younger. Uh, all right, all right so, so first topic is it is uh, stuff we picked up at MGC, and I'm gonna start with. That's just time for no, it can be it can be pickups that are recent too. I mean, we're starting as a baseline since MGC, so 
yes, obviously, uh, the thing that I'm going to show. Well, the main thing I'm going to show is from MGC, but the second thing was after MGC, and I'm going to apologize for it ahead of time. The thing that I got after MGC. Okay, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got a circumcision. You're gonna show everyone. It's about time, Evie. Yeah, about time. A little late with that. All right. Are we going up to the camera to hold up our stuff to the camera? You can. Sure you can. Because she's got Seems her like a lot of work. Finally. Yes. So last podcast, I talked about a book that I wanted to pick up at MGC, and I actually got it on Sunday. Um, I like to support my local. Well, I don't know if he's local or not, but I like to support my authors and. I like to uh, pick stuff up at cons and stuff like that because they sign them, which is really cool. So I'll get close to the camera, I guess. So this is um, the prelude um, for Fear and Sunshine. I'm really bad. (laughs) And it's by Donovan Shearer. So everyone should um, visit his website. It is fearandsunshine.com. So, Ooh. I did too, and I was very intrigued. So was I. <laughs> no fear in sunshine. So, check the uh, check out the website and support him. It's uh, pretty good so far. First book downloads free. Great. Yes. Just a quick question: What kind of book is it? I mean, I've never heard of him at all. So. So. It's kind of a children's book, but it's uh, it's not. So it's written kind of like a children's book. So there are illustrations, and it's you know pretty quick read. But um, it's about a little girl who finds out that she is the heiress to a like a monster kingdom. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pretty good so far. I haven't gotten very very far into it, but. So yep. far, so good. And you did mention the uh, the plot in the last episode, but Larry was so drunk he probably did not hear. True, you are. He is mangled. Well, I'm not even sure what episode you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> One where you sit behind the I? bar the entire time going, Where's the gin? I want the homemade gin. We have the gin already. Who's got the gin? Episode? Don't be sad, you old forlorner. Do that for three days. Because now it's time for Laura's book corner. Okay, there we go. <sighs> new bet. Wow. New bet and is new. That jingle? Yeah. The musicals are back. Well, Cause you know, she had a book you know, corner. I got a, I got a song. Do you remember my goddamn? I deserve a goddamn jingle. Well, you got a jingle. <laughs> okay, wow. You I have, to, I have to hold the mic for her because she no, only has one arm. I'm gonna hold it because oh, thanks, we Mike. have. We got. You guys think of a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I, I, for a cheap price, dude. All right. Remember, mic to mouth or near mouth. Don't mic to mic. You talk. Mic to mic. Well, I gotta talk. Yeah. I'll hold it up. Well, <clears throat> well, first day I, I got Spiral when I was drunk for a deal. I got that for eight bucks right away when I first got there on Friday. The guys were selling there at the oh, you beat me on nostalgic that. memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I actually got it for I got it for eight. Yeah, with everything in it. So and it looks that, great. That is <clears throat> I got a cover for you. So. Yeah, it is actually. And also, uh, we picked up Kingdom Hearts too. Nice. Well, not the second one, the but first one. the first one. We picked so up I the first. Hearts as well. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts as well. Thank six you, Ben. Bucks. Oh, six. That's a good deal. Mm-hmm. I found that one all by myself. I, I bought, I was like, Kelsey, if you find Kingdom Hearts, pick it up because you're going to love it because I know she wants to get into more gaming and stuff like that, a little bit hardcore besides Little Big Planet. I was like, pick up Kingdom Hearts. You'll love it. Disney characters, and it's by Square Enix, even though they it's really just another Final Fantasy with Disney characters. Yeah, but I think it was good. Yeah, it was a fun. It was fun battling with Donald and Goofy, and some of the parts of it were funny. And we also picked up uh, four prints too. They're digital uh, art prints. The guy no, makes them. Not prints. 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 Oh, okay. prints. prints. Yeah. Prints. He uh, <laughs> does them all online and then prints them off. I I showed them. No, no. Oh. Mic. The mic no. is not on you. Yeah, the mic's not on you. Then why aren't you talking? There, he does them all online and does all of it with like paint and does like digital artwork and then he'll print them off and sell them at MGC. He's got all different types of things. So you can go ahead and explain. Yeah, that. we actually bought like we already had like two from him already. Yeah, Batman and Nightwing. Uh, who are the first two characters? Oh, Garrus and Liara. I was gonna say Liara. <laughs> mhm. And then we have Rogue also right there. Pick those up for twenty bucks. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, four, four for twenty. Yeah. Oh, and then coming from the 
dungeon of G2B, I just got myself a Batman shot glass. What'd you get? A Batman shot glass. Yeah. I'm so excited. From the dungeon of G2B. I was just enjoying this. Podcast. Locked in the vault of G2B. I didn't get anything from the vault of G2B. Well, you I yeah, you did. The doctor just won't find it for a couple weeks. <laughs> oh. I saw it sitting on a... <laughs> Oh, oh, 50-50 proposition. Oh, I saw it sitting on Rob's wall of shots. I was looking at him. I was like, oh. I was like, you should give me your Batman shot. And he's like, well, you got to ask Jonah. Otherwise, you can have it. What does Jonah need with a shot glass? We're not talking now. she's got it now. All right, how about it, Travis? Um, as for MGC pickups or anything lately, I really haven't. I've been really... Uh, Kind of gaming through well, a lot of the stuff at MGC. I the weird stuff I already owned. I unfortunately like the selection there. I mean, there were a lot of great, you know, classic games there. There were a lot of good Nintendo products and stuff. Uh, I was looking for some more oddball, like in you know, Dreamcast, Saturn stuff. There's actually more Saturn games than there were Dreamcast games this year, which was a little what? weird. Well, I was like, they were like, year, no there. Dreamcast games. Like, I saw a bunch of sports titles, and then everybody had like House of the Dead too. They're always right. fucking sports. But it was like, um, yeah, it was the selection in the vendor hall was pretty oh pretty lackluster. I have to ask you, and I and I think I, the pricing, especially on systems, I think the pricing on systems this year was quite a bit higher than last year. Yeah, oh. for sure. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I totally if, agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, agree with that everything looks a I didn't even. I, I don't yeah. like. And on Sunday, everybody was really in dealing, but there still wasn't nothing. No great wheels. Yeah, no, Tyler, Tyler nothing they really needed. Twenty five dollar consoles. Yeah, but they, they were twenty five dollar consoles regardless. And so, uh, some of them yeah. didn't even work. Everything was they well, they, no but they, yeah, they did exchange. Good. Yeah, they exchanged. It for Everything was pretty much its money, not a deal. I don't deal. think there was a Thank lot of like yeah, it was a its lot money. Of, but that's really better than you could expect at a con most of the time. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. I was just trying to get the mic in the middle. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, I made out. You were you were no, you were doing things with that mic I don't want to know about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you got lucky. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, continue. Well, at the Midwest Gaming Classic, I finally stepped up to the age of all the rest of the nerds in the room, and I got a 3DS. Yeah! Yeah, yeah! yeah. Just wait, I'm not done yet. No. XL, I'm not done yet. Look Link between this. two worlds? No, it's uh, a yeah, Zelda edition. It was a Zelda edition. No, it's... Zelda? it's I forget, yeah, I forget no, it's the Link it Between is. Two Worlds. Yeah, it is that one, okay. Yeah, I thought I was right. I've been playing that shit all day. There's there's three of them. There's the original... There's the Ocarina one, which is the original 3DS, which is the black with the gold trim. You have the Link Between Worlds one, which is the gold with the Triforce on it. And then there's the Majora's Mask one, which everybody knows about because it's the most recent I've been trying yeah. to get Who the stupid Zelda oh. one for so long. Who so bought the see. Nintendo game that was in our room, by the way? Nobody bought that. It was a found one. Okay, so I, I can tell you a story <laughs> about it because one, right? one of our fellow YouTubers, uh, who I think subscribes to our channel or mine. Yeah. Well, he subscribes to my channel, but I'm pretty sure it's Guys Games of Beer too. He actually bought it. That is uh, a new production NES yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I set up on the thing hoping somebody would claim it. Because we found it outside the door in the smoking area. Right. Nobody ever came back to claim it. I thought, well, maybe somebody will stop by. Sitting around in our room. Yeah, so it sat around in our room for the weekend. Hmm. All right, I got one more thing. I got this in the mail two days ago, and I've been excited. Whoa, it's still... Kick my shit. Yeah, I will kick your shit. Your AIDS Fuck test your results. Yes, my AIDS test results. No. Oh, no, he's stripping every look away. Ha! There it is. Yep, I got my T-shirt. You don't need to see it. I'm not showing you. <laughs> yeah, sure. There you guys go. Ah, <laughs> it's okay, that is that is. It's Sly Fox Hound. I just picked it up. Yep, I'm one of his. I'm one of the homies. I gotta admit it. That's hilarious. That is That's actually pretty awesome. damn good. All right, so. Oh, that's cute. Well. It's okay. Man, so much stuff. So, my name's Tom, and I have issues and problems. Hi, Tom. And really, what the problems are is, I keep buying stuff. So I'm gonna go back in chronological order. Because I will eventually get back to what I bought at MGC. But before I did that, yesterday I picked up a really sweet Commodore 64 with disk drive. A couple hundred disks, about 50 original disks. I know, did you see that? Which was awesome. Um, All in really good shape. Some couple of cartridges with it. I mean, no monitor, but here's the thing. 30 bucks. 30 bucks for everything, okay? Oh. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Wow. For a work... for a work. Well, you picked up a monitor for it like a week ago. Exactly. So, I, yeah. So, so... We'll find out later. Wait, wait a minute. I, you know, if if I thought that would work, I would kill people for the gear. So then, this is this is this is for for some somebody me and Rob know, but I'm not going to mention his name. So 
Robert started looking at a GameCube online on the Racine Rummage Sale site, and so did I at the same exact time. And I saw Rob talk to the guy, and I was already talking to the guy, so I made sure I go. I went to Rob, but then. A third person we know also started talking to the guy, saying, "I'll take it, I'll take it." By this time, we had already, me and Robert, already divvied this thing up. And it was like, "No, dude, you ain't gonna get this. We have long since got this." So, picked up a, a GameCube with the Nintendo uh, um, uh, Game, Boy Advance. Game Boy Advanced adapter, twenty-five dollars. Nice. Yeah, with deal. with the black controller. It's a black GameCube, so it's really a nice one. Very nice. So that was a good one. That was a real good one. But that was one of those, if you didn't jack, grab it right away, it was gone. And the, I know he doesn't watch the show, so I, we don't have to worry about this. So, Because he won't know that we screwed him out of that one. <laughs> no, we had it first. We we were already dealing. We were already, me and Rob had already said, you know. So, so we, we got that. And then, uh, let's see, my ColecoVision has come in. So I've got a ColecoVision out with the, uh, what's that? They call it the Expansion 1, which is yeah. the Atari adapter for it. So you can play your Atari 2600 cartridges on it. This is what made it popular. Yeah, so I know I know that the Atari 2600 part works. But when I run in the ColecoVision cartridges, I'm having some issues. I think it's just dirty contacts in the ColecoVision. So I got that. So let's see. That's all been since the Midwest Gaming Classic, which was, what, only two weeks ago. So shoot, do I have a problem. Um, Midwest Gaming Classic. Me and Rob scored big time. Okay, so there was a uh, Pack Rat Games was out there, and if you ever get a chance, check them out online. Pack Rat Games, they have some amazing products, and their prices are really, really good. So, as everybody knows, I'm really big into the multi carts, and what we picked up was the Odyssey Two multi cart, which is 233. Uh, what is it? Uh, 8K and 16K. Um, yeah, there's a little bit. Actually, I think it's 4.8. I'm sorry, 4.8 and 16K cartridges all tucked onto here. So, But here's the beautiful part about this. Unlike a lot of the new multi-carts where they've got these really cool menus and you get to pick how you set it, check out the dip switches on this thing. Every game is a dip switch setting. So every time you want to change games on it, you have to set the dip switches to the game you want to play. There are over 233 dip switch settings on this thing. It's absolutely freaking amazing. I mean, isn't that beautiful? Don't set it for a game that's not compatible. It'll <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it. So truly an amazing piece. But here's the thing. We got these for 40 bucks a pop, which... That's is insane. for a multi cart is absolutely insane. Normally for multi carts I pay about a hundred bucks per pop. So to get a multi cart that yeah. cheap was amazing. Pack Rat Games. Oh yeah, no, no, he is online. Check out his site. He's got great prices. He um, is also now taking over the line. I forget the gentleman who was producing these before. He's taken over a, a line of Vectrex games. So he's producing a bunch of the Vectrex games. I picked up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A dozen, dozen different titles. I picked up Space Frenzy, um, Vector Mania, and what was the other one we picked up that weekend? Well, I picked up a whole bunch from him. So I picked up a whole bunch of uh, the uh, the Vectrex games, which are new games being released for the Vectrex. So a whole bunch of cool stuff there. Again, if you get a chance, check out Pack Rat Games. We'll have a link to his site on in the show notes. All right? All right, Larry. I could go back further, but I'm going to stop there because otherwise it's just getting to be ridiculous. Honestly, this could go on all night. I'm just gonna put it out there. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't bring any of my stuff with, but, um, and and many of its repeats, anyways. Like for example, I bought this same Vetrex cartridges that that Tom did, so you know we all had to fill out our Vetrex collection. So, but probably the thing that's kind of funny is okay, so we went to a, a gaming convention, primarily video games, tabletop, you know. So maybe some role playing action happening there, and what did I buy? The demo CDs of the bands that were playing. So that was <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's freaking awesome. So, I like that. Yeah, I actually, I, I, I uh, they had, they, it was, it was really cool. They, they had bands. You're supposed to be, no, you're supposed to be buying something and like. And like okay, bartering. before you go, before you go any further, two of the bands want to be on our show. So, I'm not so talking right. crap about. So any damn of it, the Laura! Don't band. alienate yet another. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking crap about any of the actual bands that were there. I just don't know if MGC should have placed them in the vendor tent. See, I disagree with you. They were all the way at the end. Oh, what, where, where you were at with the hall the was were real loud uh, right at that. That last yeah. table. Yeah, yeah the last table, table, which which I do know the vendor layout happened to be the place where she was buying her books. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I've walked past so many times and I'm like, 
trying to sell them to me, and I was just like, I can't hear you. So, so it might have been ironic placement for for uh, you. But I thought the bands was a hit. I thought people uh, were getting into it, and it was one of those things where you went off, you played some games and stuff, you came back, you kind of checked out a few bands or whatever. Um, I love to support local bands and stuff like that, so I actually bought um, uh, everybody's CD that played that day. Um, and, you know, they, they, they don't charge much, you know, five bucks, maybe, maybe ten tops, you know, it's not a big deal, you know. They, most of them were pretty good. Some of them were a little out there for me. I, You know, they, they, there was like the... Yeah, I mean, different tastes, you know, I think it was more like the one was more like kind of weird chip music, like an enigma or something like that, you know, and I was like, eh, you know, what happened really me, but, you know, there was a few others that were like, yeah, this is good, you know, I, I dig that, so, but it was still funny that I, you know, you go to a video game thing, and, yeah, and you know. you'd expect to see, like, chip tunes bands at... I would have thought yeah, there was. Saying. I would have thought there was be more of that, but yeah. a lot of them were just sort of straight, normal, you know, not, not non-denominational bands. Yeah, <laughs> non-denominational. It's kind of strange seeing Iron Maiden there. I right, it was, it was, it was strange, it was, it was nice strange. Actually having music and not just like the rumble of like you know just noisy Games. people talking and stuff. Like That's, in the vendor hall, you know, because all you really hear is just this like rumbling noise because there's so many voices in the tent and stuff like that. No, so I point. thought it was nice to finally have some like actual music or background noise. But uh, again, I think you could still separate that. Well, off. yeah, right. Or maybe push it off a little further. Or oh, arrange it better. Now that being said, they did put it on the opposite end of the games, yep. which was a good idea. If you would have had that at the same end of the gaming, it would have been, been a big. Yeah, the game. What do you mean? See, it was at the opposite end of the tabletop. If you weren't out Correct. there, thank you. So it would have been really difficult to play a tabletop game and they, next had, to the what band. They had there was the air hockey tables, which are yeah. allowed to start with, which was also good. But if I was I a vendor, just, if I was a vendor, I would have been super pissed because yeah, it's so hard to sell stuff to people when like you can't, you can't, when you can't talk to them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You seem to have books in your hand. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got <laughs> done. <laughs> it, was, it was a sympathy buy. I'm not, no, I'm not, it wasn't. I'm not going to lie. Donovan. Oh, you're alienating people now. Well, it's going to be on the show? Fire, I don't know. Well, get him I'll on the show. Him. Get him on the show. Email I even him. talked to him, too, because remember when I was trying to take the pudding and jello shots? I gave him our card and said that he should check us out. All right. See, now you guys have got to contact him. Get him on the show. I will. We haven't done it. I don't think we've done an author yet, I didn't Rob, like have the we? bands because I was hung over and all I could hear was rock. Rob, have we done an author? I've not done an author. I think we've done an author on the show. So, uh, you know, so I, the, the band was kind of neat. Now, I, I was a little disappointed that the uh, marquees are uh, very few available out there, you know, and especially any any good ones, you know, that's was really disappointing. I found a couple locations, okay, but... I was going to say you went in the pinball rooms that were, like, in inside the building, not in the vendor hall, because yeah. you're right, in the vendor hall, they didn't have much of that at all, but in the building, there was a few, but only a few. Yeah, and, and obviously, I'm looking yeah, for the hot commodity ones, ones you yeah. know, the, the Burger Times, the Tappers, the, the Pac-Mans and such, and I know I'm going to pay a little more for those, and I expect that. But if I'm going to pay a little more for them, they had, like, I think they had Donkey Kong Jr., but it was in it was in good shape. You know, it would have needed a, a lot of cleaning up, and the, the risk of cleaning it up, you might have actually removed some of the uh, paint and stuff. So it's like, yeah, so it's like, well, like no. I saw a Tapper, and that wasn't even for sale. I remember yeah, I thinking, like, oh, oh, how so much somebody had the marquee, and it wasn't and for sale? And it said not for sale. Well, then why? Yeah. Well, well, we show stuff that's not for sale, so, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. But, 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 like Rob says, touch everything, play everything, including Rob. So, and, and I, I was oh, also a little disappointed with the... You touch and play Rob. Yeah, you do it all the time. He's action posable. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the action right there. Oh, Wasn't man. There game that okay. Was so, all right. for like so, that's what I all right. bought. All right. Right. Nice. Well, Rob, what did you get? Uh, stuff. I got some stuff. There, that's the end of this. No. Uh, no, just kidding. no, 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 no. What stuff did you get? Okay, uh, so I bought a bit of stuff. Uh, I heard you spent a little bit too much. Okay. No, I was okay. I was actually decent with my spending this year, but I did buy some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I got Rampage for my uh, Sega Master System. Oh, sweet. I, I am obsessed, obsessed with the idea of 16-bit games that have been packed into an 8-bit system. I, I don't know why... But for some reason, that does it for me. So this is... Uh, Sega is one of the few companies that really did a lot of that. And, uh, yeah, so Rampage. Nice. It's not bad. So it plays well? Yeah, it's hard to control, which is rare on the Master System, even though it's got that weird, demented D-pad. I like 
like the D-pad on the Master System. I really do. Honestly, think about it. They did a great job on those controllers, actually. Other than the fact that they put the cord out of the side so your thumb hits it. But the joystick on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. Hold on a minute. Yeah, on, I'm, not, I'm going to be off uh, camera for a second here. I forgot about you gave this. Me shit about it. Oh yeah, I gave you such crap about it. Where is that? Oh, here it is. I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gave me crap about it. Oh, I did too. I mean, nothing but crap. All right, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm unpacking Tom's stuff, and uh, out of his packing, I, uh, I I run into this. Well, not this one. Not that one. Uh, and I'm like Tom. What the hell did you buy that piece of crap for? That looks ridiculous. It looks like an 80s shift knob. What? <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Oh, my God. That right? Said, okay, you may, you, may, you may be giving me shit about that, but who is that now, Rob? So 20 minutes later, I come back into the room. <laughs> yeah, I picked up this. That's kind of embarrassing. I Maybe I psychologically blocked that out. Why, I'm show why and tell. did you pick it up then if you, well, you thought it, it was, was ridiculous? It was five bucks. It, and it, it looks like an 80 shift now, but it's a straight joystick. It, it does, it, instead of having the D-pad on the Master System, it actually gives you a joystick. You know my thing, I collect, I collect basically arcade sticks for every system I have, and that's the closest thing you can get on the Master System. Why, why is it left-handed? It's not left-handed. I think it is. No, it's right-handed. <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it, there was no standards back then. I mean, in the eighties, in the eighties, there wasn't like ergonomics. Slept under power lines for a while or something. It's got a weird, 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 weird giant head. Play me. It was exposed to gamma radiation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last things I picked up, although last there's probably some other oh, stuff. All right, so I'm going to turn around. Yeah, you brought me things. I've got, over there is a nice uh, Mario Kart flag. Every time I went to Nintendo, I brought you something back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was new this year, that that Nintendo was officially yeah, there. I knew he yeah. loved Nintendo. Last year no, it's were... a Pokemon podcast featuring Nintendo. I was gonna say last uh, year. Specifically, was built that way. Last year they were giving away stuff too, and I. Yeah, yeah, it, was all it, it, yeah. Was, it was Nintendo. It was just yeah. I, I have lots of years. Uh, I have a lot well, of years. Every time I went down there, I was like, oh man, Rob would love this. He should get down here. But it's like, well, they only have so many left, so I should probably grab this for him while I'm here so he has it. Somebody totally ran off of my stickers, though. Pretty sweet. Really? Yeah, I left it in the room. It's terrible. So not only did they take my soul and my time, they took my stick. You bastards. Oh, I forgot to mention. I got some delightful stickers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's how we roll. Oh, so the last thing I picked up, uh, I'm going to turn the camera. Turn the camera. Okay, so here we are in my little gaming corner. This is one of my collections of crap. And what I picked up at MGC is this, the Twin Famicom. And what's so special about it? Number one, it's a sexy red. I mean, look at this thing. This thing was meant to be played. Unlike most systems that try to look like a car or a VCR, this thing said, I am a freaking game system. And you know, that's an important thing when it's a game. Look at that stupid baby blue cartridge up there. That looks ridiculous. But we'll talk about that baby blue cartridge in a minute. What's special about it? Well, it takes both standard Famicom cartridges and these Famicom discs. And these Famicom discs were made, number one, because they're cheap. I mean, that's, you know, that's, kind of, that's kind of a big thing. It was cheap to produce. And I'll show you what, what's wrong with them. But number two, uh, they can store more data than the standard cartridge of the time could. So they could put in improved music, and many games had improved music, and saves, which is really nice because a lot of times you couldn't save in cartridges, not, not until later. Uh, in fact, Link uh, was made on this first. That's right, right here. That's right. Okay, but Rob, you have to tell them the backstory why you ended up with this particularly cool version of the Famicom <laughs> versus the first one you bought. Explain <laughs> why a, you ended up with the cool one. I bought a one. black one, and uh, the the disc drive didn't work. Uh, but that it, it was actually due to a. Uh, it, I found out later that it it had not been uh, lubricated properly, which happens a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> but what game were you trying to insert at the time? <laughs> I'm not going to talk about what game I was trying to insert Pole at position. the time. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, I just wanted to hear you 
but anyway, but anyway, <laughs> as a consolation they prize, they gave me this much better model because they felt kind of bad about that happening. So, and who gave that to you? That was Windy Gaming. Wind, windy, windy, windy Gaming out of Chicago. Out of Chicago. So nice Illinois people. Great Go figure. Nice, really nice. We ended up playing uh, Werewolf with them later on. But anyway, so I picked up Bubble Bottle. Great game, by the way, and has better music and saves. Xanic. Not a drug to keep you up at night, but actually a really good shooter. Yeah, Windy Gaming. I said a really good shooter this time. Not passable. Really good. Okay. <laughs> they give me crap. I did a video, and I was just testing it, and I called it a passable shooter. But it actually is a really good shooter. Uh, this game, which I have no idea what it is, and it's an adventure. I, I blind bagged two of these. I just, like, grabbed them randomly just to see if I got something interesting. Oh, it's interesting. But I can't understand it because it's all in Japanese. So, <laughs> and this, oh, this is great stuff. This is a Mahjong game. Hi, <gasps> nice. who'd have thought on the Famicom I would have found a Mahjong game? God, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right? I have to ask, is it strip Mahjong though? Because damn near every other game on the NES is strip Mahjong. Oh, I'd have been happy if it was. Oh. But it was, however, like two bucks. So, mm, no complaints. It's okay. keep your clothes on, Mahjong. Mahjong. All right, so uh, a shortly after that, I ordered a Super Pitfall because I wanted something. One of the unusual things about the Famicom over the standard NES is on the second controller, it actually has this microphone. And there's some games that support the microphone. Uh, Link would have been one of them, actually, that supported it. Also, uh, uh, well, uh, Super Pitfalls, another one, unfortunately, that supports it. However, the problem with Super Pitfall is... Super Pitfall sucks. It's not a good game. No, no, no. It's very, very hard. By the way, if you don't believe me, uh, watch the Angry Video Game Nerd play it. I thought maybe I just sucked at the game, but no, everybody sucks at this game. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't, everybody. Isn't, it, isn't that like uh, the first ladder you go to, you die? Yes. In fact, the first ladder is... Go ahead, Rob. Show us. Do Come it. on. Show you us. Do it. Show us. You gotta do it. It's All right. Ladder of death, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the very first ladder. Very the very first, first ladder. ladder. First, very, very first if you drop down, not only are you, and, and this is AVGN territory, not really mine, okay, but. the first ladder. But. Whoa! All right, so not, now not only, let, let's just wait a second here and see how dead you really are on this first ladder. Come on. Oh, Jesus, God damn it. See, you almost need to reset the game. That's another thing it does it. So wait, you places you poorly. You got yeah, we'll just spikes on the other side. Yeah, that, that's the whole game, by the way. Nothing but spikes, spiders, crap flying that's gonna kill you. It's redonkulous. It's a redonkulous, redonkulous game. But hold on a second. Let's just uh, let's see what would have happened if I was smart enough to check for the bird. Okay. Okay. So so you'll climb partially down the ladder. You won't just drop down at this time. I was really hoping that the problems with it were because I was I was playing it on my fake Famicom. Right. No. All right. Let's. So wait a minute, why is he looking, why, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why, Whoa, wait, god damn it. Why is he a Keystone cop? I have no idea why Pitfall Harry has become a cop. Yeah, because he's wearing, But now he's a cop. I swear to God, it looks like he's a cop. Yeah, he's been enlisted by the police department. All right, so so here, here's where I was, okay? And uh -huh. to your left, look, there are spikes. Freaking spikes. What the hell? Who does that kind of crap to somebody? And the whole game, oh god, it's constant, crazy. Oh, why has he got a gun now? <laughs> wait, wait, Pitfall, Harry's got a gun? Harry's got a yeah. gun. Hey, he had a whip in the first one, though. But that, I understood. Whip it, whip he had it. nothing in the first one. Well, the very first one, but he did yeah. get a whip eventually. Yeah, he, he did in uh, the Super Nintendo well, version. So right? you did learn not to go down the first ladder, right? So I learned not to go down the first ladder, but guess what? It doesn't get any better. <laughs> so, All yeah. right, so anything else good at... Uh... Midwest Gaming I did. Uh, did anybody see uh, New Bet's uh, New Bet's G2B coasters that she made? No, she didn't. Show well, us the G2B. Hold on. So wait, wait, wait. Let's bust over. No, 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 no. We'll do it over here, and then we'll we'll cool. do the next segment. Uh, so yeah, wow. is it there? Are they there? Bring them closer. Bring them. Oh, don't, don't worry about the ribbon. People will figure it out. It's I really cool. love it, so those I don't are, want to take it really apart. Cool. Yeah, flip them Look at them. Got a whole set. Look at that. Yeah, like uh, that. I I have a problem with 3D rotation. Yeah, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, so I I actually got this for a really good deal. It was like 150 bucks, and you, you can't get it on eBay for that. 
not with shipping, the $50 shipping they tack onto it. So Windy City's pricing, Windy City's pricing was actually really, it was eBay competitive. So, I mean, can you beat that? No, not really. Not at a show for sure. All cool. right. All right, so, so the first segment's over. So this is the end of the first segment, and we'll be Please right back. How's it going, guys? What's going on, brother? What's up, dude? Uh, not much. Just got back from the brewery. Ooh. Brought a growler. Nice. Oh, bro. What? Coat rack. Where? Right there, man. The Hangover's custom coat rack. What? That's freaking sweet. Yeah, it's the best hangover you'll ever have. And we're back. So, and we have lost interest. We have totally lost interest, but it's a good time to lose interest because what we're talking about is GameStop, who is now going to start carrying retro games in some selected markets, meaning any market where they think they can make a buck. Uh, well, enough with consistency. I don't know. I don't yes. know. No, it will be. You'll take my local game dealer yes. when you pry him for my cold, dead fingers. Here's the thing, Dave. No, GameStop will compete with local dealers, and the problem is we are, we have a good local retro dealer, and GameStop, being the douches they are, will compete. Yeah, but they'll never beat them on his Atari 2600 and 7800 cartridge prices. Good luck going two bucks, people. They're not going to do it. So boycott GameStop if you're in Racine. Um, and buy from? And oh, buy from oh, New Wave. Thank you. I got mixed feelings about that. Oh. I like New Wave. No. That's where I got my N64. Well, no. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't means? love. I'm not going to say I don't love New New Wave, okay? They're a great logo thing. But in in this grand scheme of keeping retro gaming alive, it, to having a, a powerful enough partner to actually fight against some of the DMR stuff, some of the downloadable only stuff, GameStop is one of the few sort of you know, standing uh, armament we have in that sort of counterbalance. And, you know... So, it, uh, evil. See, that's the problem. Wait, now, okay, so let's go, around, let's go around on this. Okay, so what is GameStop's audience? Not us. So the people who play retro games don't necessarily go to GameStop. So are they really going to do that well? A. That's and B. And B. And B, how much are how much are they charging for these? Like, is it going to be ridiculous? Because their corporate profits have to stay up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that and that's one of the things. Are they going to pay less for your retro merchandise and then charge more, or are <coughs> they going to, for a while, keep their prices suppressed just till they get rid of their competition, like they often do, and then come back and ruin retro gaming entirely? Like, you know they want to. I mean, they bought all the retro gaming stores that they freaking could. If it was a chain, they bought it. Unless, so. unless That's unless true. Uh, Completely. Uh, Funko Land. Funko Land, yeah. They I bought, never liked Funko Land. I liked Funko Land. I, I didn't like Funko Land. Yeah. That's what they I were pretty good. Like. Funko Land had a good... So no, they had a decent they had selection. They a dirty, dirty name, and I liked it. Yeah, but um, I do have to say that there's going to be a lot of issues, especially because, I mean, I think that's like the one place that, you know, smaller retailers or mom and pop shops have been able to have been like, hey, this is something that GameStop just doesn't, you know, and they, they abandoned it. And now, I, like, I think it's it's going to dilute the market. It's going to it's going to hurt the choices people have. And it's going to I think it's going to hurt the price. Um GameStop is really notorious for buying things really low from people and then selling them really high. Um, it could be good for retailers, but I don't think that with the shelf space that they have uh, that they're going to be able to compete. I just don't. It'll all be Nintendo. All right, just to play devil's advocate here, though, with GameStop, they already have a distribution network. So what's to say that they don't, you know, some of the – you can't find everything at New Wave. Yeah, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa
You've been in New Wave. New Wave has everything someplace. He may not know what he has, but he's got everything. <laughs> he doesn't have and they call. will order it for it. you if they do not have it. Okay, hyper-localized, we're safe. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We have viewers <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Let's not... I mean, but, but do you really believe that GameStop is going to store the bizarre stuff at any kind of same prices? No. I know that... Before they got out of the retro business, they were closing retro stuff out at ridiculously high prices anyway. They were ridiculous. So they're executive officers who I don't think have anything to do with gaming. I think they're just bean counters. Uh, then, maybe, you damn they're, bean they're counters. Anyway right yeah, right. Well, and I think that, like, the soup, because when you buy something from GameStop, or when they buy something from you, it just um, it pops up on their computer screen how much to pay you for. So if it's super, like, weird, you know, like the stuff you guys buy, they're not even going to know what to buy it for. Well, I'm saying, what's to say they'll even sell it? What if they take it, have it on the shelf for a while, realize that it's not even selling very well, and just take it completely off? Because if they realize, if they realize they're not going to make any money off of it, why put it on their shelf in the first place and sell it? I agree, New Beth's right. My concern would be that they will take things and destroy them. No, we'll dumpster no, dive. They put them in the dumpster. Well, well, yes, but the problem is if we don't dumpster dive on the right time, things get destroyed. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is never not dumpster dive. Well, because they're only gonna think like, oh, hey, you know, if we buy out every other business, you know, maybe this all just go away eventually, or people will get them at conventions where they go and, and they have just thrown away things at. Well, you know, it's kind of funny uh, on the indie gaming front, seeing Microsoft show up at indie gaming conventions. What the hell? Uh, is this is this what it's going to be? You're going to go to our uh, you're going to go to MGC and you're going to see GameStop there, just selling their crappy wares and refusing to nego negotiate. <laughs> I do say there's such a large market for retro gaming now, like and people are collecting weird, you know, very niche consoles and niche products, like. I think there's still definitely going to be a market for it. It's, it's too huge to ignore. That's why GameStop's getting into it. But it's just like, it, it's such a large base that, yes, GameStop's going to be covering the Super Nintendo stuff and the Sega Genesis. But if you want to look for Vetri stuff and you want to look for, you know, something for an SG-1000, you're not going to find that stuff at a GameStop. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ben? And who's the message from? That was a telemarketer. Uh, that was the IRS. I don't know who it was. It was from Massachusetts. It's called uh, silence. They yeah. Stop Usually in our show. Have signal down in this basement. Listen, let's not act like we don't have control in in what we do. We can make purchasing and selling choices here. If we don't like the way GameStop is treating our beloved retro stuff, <laughs> stop! Don't sell it to them. Don't sell it to them. Don't buy from them. But you know what? If they're being cool about it, all right. And you know what? Don't act like, all right, anybody, any one of the stores at MGC, any one of the vendors, they're trying to make a few rupees on that stuff. And this, you know, and it's, and, it, and, and they do, and that's fine, you know? So here's the problem, Larry. It's not our beloved stuff. It's the competition. They are going to be... So, I told you about two deals I picked up in the last couple of weeks right. that were amazing deals. So, what's to stop GameStop from, even if they're paying crap, cutting me out of those deals? Well, okay. As a seller, as a seller, if they're paying crap, walk out the door. Yeah, but people you know? know? I mean, and they if do you, it now. There's something you know? They do it for convenience. Because there's still eBay. If you're not feeling you're getting a good deal, no. you can sell it on eBay or okay. Etsy. Someone's grandfather, dies. Someone's grandfather dies. They're not going to put it on eBay. They're going to sell it to the fastest place they can, which is GameStop. Oh. And here's why, my friends in the gaming world, you must put personal instructions in your will <laughs> about your gaming, your gaming equipment. You They're <laughs> with... Dollar amounts and expected returns for every single thing. Because I have. Okay, so, have I, okay. <laughs> so have I, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. I've already divided up all my vintage gaming stuff. I do not want to go out on fucking eBay for nothing after all the work I put into collecting it. Well then, Tom. I just got to say, 
I just gotta say, the more you know, Larry, the more you know. <laughs> well, I think with like this whole entire thing, if you know, we were talking about like GameStop throwing away their games, maybe gamers should just become freaks and just live off of uh, GameStop. Then just dig in their dumpsters and grab whatever they can, freaking style. But like he said, freaking gaming. Like freaking like, exactly, like freaking like said, gaming. But like Tom said, they could have already been destroyed away so that way because they don't yeah, want people digging through their dumpsters. So they'll exactly. probably already yeah. break it so people don't go digging well, through their trash and get free games. Also, also, exactly. also, what the. F- All right, let's let, let's just say this too. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna keep like. Well, like, say if I gave him a Top Gun that I have, which is a really horrible flying simulator game for the Nintendo. Slash the best game ever. <laughs> the best game ever. With Tom Cruise and everything, you know. <laughs> Danger Zone. Danger Zone. But but then but then but then like I give him that. And then they're not selling that game because it's just so crappy and nobody wants to get it. Instead, they're probably selling the more popular games like Link, like the first Zelda or Metroid or... St- for like, 50 bucks a pop. Yeah, for 50 oh, bucks a pop. I have a really so good idea. Expensive. We should sneak into a GameStop and switch all of their retro games for copies of Shaq Fu. <laughs> 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 I have... I... <laughs> I got, I got fifty, I got fifty copies of Shaq ready for you. <laughs> Is this a good time to game speculate? Game speculate. Yeah, where you just like buy up all the copies on eBay and then sell them to GameStop. You're not gonna get the money for GameStop. Right? No. No way. No way. They're, you're not gonna get your money back. They're gonna be like, oh, that's a nice uh, Zelda you got there. Mm, five bucks. Yep. Yeah, but I bought it for a dollar and obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll turn around. Yeah, but that, that's if you get lucky. Go for a lot of money. But then guess what? They're gonna have to test and they're gonna be like, oh well this isn't really working correctly, so we're gonna have to charge you fifty cents now. Hmm. And then they'll turn around and sell it for forty, fifty dollars. Yeah, exactly. So wait, wait, and again, they, they they don't even test it out. So I, I just got a PS3 for free because GameStop wouldn't even bother looking at it with this one guy. Doesn't quite work right, so it's like, well, we we're not going to take it. They don't do that. They no, won't go through no, that kind of work. They're very stingy about their disc policy. Exactly it. Yet, how do I always get scratch discs from them? How's that work? <laughs> exactly. I just want to know. Or just that work. Can't stop broken. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yet, so, you know what? I think we've learned something here today. There's a little passion. And uh, what we've learned is GameStop, you suck. You suck, okay, GameStop. So evidently, we are never going to get GameStop as a corporate sponsor for this show. And if we do, we'll change our tune really quick. <laughs> if, if anybody ever took the time to go back through the catalog of our episodes, there was a day that we actually kind of praised them for helping keep the existence of even the possibility of gaming. I don't, I don't record. I don't listen, remember that at all. I think I was imagining no, that. No, we had talked about, listen, they're still dealing yeah, in... They are still dealing in the things you can touch and feel and handle. And we I'm always dealing in the stuff I can touch and feel and handle. Dead soon because all the things you can touch, feel and handle are going to be gone. And the only thing you're actually going to buy is a license. Yep, eventually you're going to. And so well, the yeah, I don't want to the last castles. All right. I I know we talked about the market too, but like whenever you walk in a GameStop, you really don't see well, any of you guys walk in there. Let's just be honest here. It's always kids, it's always it's kids always with their parents. Kids. Or there's always, you know, like the people like me that buy in all the new games. Do they really have the market for like old I retro games? Mouth breathers. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying though? You said like they did, didn't you? No? 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 You don't you don't think they do? I <laughs> I rather, I rather just go to Mega Media Exchange and get my stuff. Uh, they, uh, all the Mega Media Exchanges in this area went out of business. Right, uh. they, and they were hyper local again. Yeah, they were hyper local. Mega Media Exchange still exists. Yeah. Uh, not around here. The yeah. one on Seventy Sixth Street of closed. There's Brookfield. Where? There's one on the east side, and the one on Seventy Sixth just no, moved the block away. The oh, it right moved to the block away. Oh, did it? Yeah. Yeah. It moved a block away. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? Last time I went, last time. It was closed, and I didn't know it moved, so I'm a little upset right now. <laughs> yeah, what about the one in Puerto Rico? <laughs> don't leave us, no, baby. I, I don't know the, one the one in Puerto Rico. Rico. Oh, I love that thing. 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 I love that th
Mexico in June. I will check that out. Okay. For all our Puerto Rican listeners, make sure to stop there. I'm going to close this out because it's collapsing into chaos. As it often does. Ah!